And today's presenter is Ross Libby. He's a CPA and a CA. He's our entrepreneurial guru who's going to be giving us all the advice and information that we need to know about HST. Ross. Thank you very much, Carol. I appreciate the intro. Um, okay, so the HST lowdown. Let's talk about what we're going to hit here. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to run you through initially uh, a number of different components. We're going to start with just some basics around when you want to register for HST. We'll then go through some of the hows, uh, make that fairly quick, fairly simple, because ultimately it is quick and simple. Uh, what are some of the different methods of filing HST? There's a variety of them and also the filing periods and the timing that relates to those filing periods. And ultimately, what is it that you have to file and how to file? I'll wrap up with a few small questions, last minute questions after that, and we'll work our way through. I want to start with a little bit of a caveat. Actually, it's my big fat caveat. Uh, every business owner's situation is different. And I want you to understand that the information that follows here is certainly from sources considered reliable, most notably CRA, Canada Revenue Agency. Uh, but as always, please, please, please consult your own tax advisor to make sure you're taking the correct actions for your own particular circumstances. Okay? The information we're going to talk about here today is about registering to collect HST on goods and services that you sell. It's pulled together primarily for business owners in Ontario. If, excuse me, if your situation covers other areas, other provinces, there's likely a lot of other stuff that we'll need to go through. We'll end up taking that offline if that's necessary. Uh, this is not about the HST credit. Okay? Now, last comment before we start working our way through. The average small business owner typically, stats show us, loses anywhere from 10% to as much as 35% of their otherwise deductible expenses, you know, completely oblivious to how much that actually costs. And I ask people all the time, why do you think that is, and here's why. Because they simply don't keep track. So I want to start all of this by saying, if you organize your materials, if you pull together your books and records in an organized fashion, and I don't care whether your system is files and folders or an Excel spreadsheet or QuickBooks or simply accounting, any of the other many uh, accounting programs that are out on the marketplace, or something much more robust. Right? If you do it on an ongoing regular basis, it will be so much easier, and it, it, it'll make a whole lot more sense for you as well. So let's move right into it. When should you register? Well, we have to start with when do you have to register? When must you register? And I'm sure that everybody has heard that when you crest the $30,000 taxable sales mark, you have to register. At that point, you no longer have a choice. Um, interesting point. A lot of people are told, sometimes by well-meaning friends, neighbors, family, and even accountants and tax preparers will say, you know, you're under $30,000, you don't need to register. And that is absolutely true. However, there's, a one, there's one more, quite frankly, much more important question I think people should ask, and that is why might you choose to register early? Quite frankly, there's a variety of reasons why you might. And what I want to suggest is there's four important ones. The first one, which is usually front and center for most small business owners, is you actually will save money in your business. How is that? Well, what happens is Revenue Canada, and I'll go through the mechanics a little bit later, but Revenue Canada, CRA, actually gives you back the HST on those things that you purchase in your business. Now, we don't get that as individuals, but as b small business owners, business owners at all in, in Canada, you will, under most circumstances, get back the HST that you paid on your business inputs, otherwise known as your input tax credits. Okay? So you will actually save money. The second issue is you avoid the need to change midstream. In other words, if you start your business and you're not charging HST because you're under $30,000, but then 
at some point you crest the thirty thousand dollar mark in a year so let's say in the first year 2013 you're under thirty thousand and either late in 2013 or sometime in 2014, mid-year, you crest $30,000 in a year. Now you have to go back to your clients and say, well, I wasn't charging you HST before. However, I'm charging it to you now, and here's why. And it's just an explanation you can avoid. I think the most important issue is this next one. It's actually more, a, I'm an accountant, but it's really more of a marketing issue, I think, for a lot of people. And that is, what exactly is the message that you're sending to your clients? If you say, my bill is $1,000 or $500, and you don't have to worry about the HST, I don't charge HST, what message is that sending to your clients? Well, I asked this at a seminar I was doing last night, and the first thing that came out of anybody's lips was, it sounds like you're being a little bit sketchy. You're being off the record or black market. And, and certainly, that's probably not a message you want to send to your clients in most circumstances. The other message, if you, know, if you step back from that one, is you're yelling to your clients loud and clear, either I'm doing this off the books, off the record, which nobody wants to hear about, nobody wants to know about. CRA is well aware that it happens, and you don't want to be advertising that. Um, but more importantly is the fact that you're yelling out to your clients, I am small fry. I am not doing over $30,000 in volume. And again, is that a message you want to send to your clients? Well, probably not for most people. Next issue, uh, and the last issue in, in this stream that I'm going to talk about is the impact from CRA if you miss registering. I ran into a client recently who crested the $30,000 mark was because his, his records were kept quite a bit in arrears. He actually didn't realize when he had crested the $30,000 mark. And by the time he realized that he was actually into the next year. So his, his sales for that year were close to $50,000. There was $20,000 of which he should have been charging HST on, and he wasn't, and all of his sales in the next year. CRA typically is only going to come back to you well after the fact, sometimes as long as three years later. Do you want to automatically lose 13% of what you thought was your revenue? Because if CRA discovers it and you didn't, that's what could potentially happen. They could say, well, you charged $1,000. You didn't actually make $1,000. You made 13% less than that. So all of these are reasons why I typically recommend to most businesses that you probably want to register right off the bat. There's one other I didn't mention here that I'll hit real quickly, and that is when do most businesses have their largest expenses? And that's usually at startup. And if you're able to get back the HST on the things you purchased, wouldn't you rather get that back when you're purchasing most of your items for your business? Right? The next question we get into is how exactly do we register? Well, there are uh, two very easy ways to do it. The easiest is, quite frankly, online. Uh, I've got the website here, and it'll be at the resources toward the end of the presentation. However, if you simply type in uh, through Google or any of the search engines business registration online, uh, otherwise known as Bro, you can uh, end up at a CRA at the CRA web page for business registration online. There's some great background information in here. Uh, also, for more information, they have a series of, I believe it's 14 different uh, videos that you can watch all about different components of HST. Some issues may apply to you, some not. You can watch them independently. You don't have to watch them in order. But some great additional background information. That's all on the CRA website. They do have some tremendous information there. You can also Register over the phone. Uh, you can, and here's the number: not the 1-800-959-5525 is the CRA business line. Um, you can also complete your form, print it off online, or, or print it off, complete it, and then send it in. Uh, I don't find an awful lot of people are doing that approach any longer. The online approach will will handle it for most people. And typically, they'll call the CRA business line if they run into a snag of some sort or they have any questions. 
And while you're at the business registration online site, there's a number of different things that you can sign up for. First, you sign up for a business registration number, which every small business should get. Um, secondly is the HST. You can also register your business in the province of Ontario to protect the name. And there's a wide variety of other things that I won't bother getting into now, but you'll see when you go there. Next issue we want to talk about is what are the different methods of filing? There's what's known as the regular method or the long method, and quite frankly, it's not long if your books and records are done properly. Um, there is a large guide done, put out by CRA, RC4022, that will walk you through everything you wanted to know and a whole lot more. It's a long guide. It's uh, 40 or 50 pages long. Um, but pretty much any questions you might have would be answered in there. There's also what's called the quick method, which for some people is considerably quicker for depending upon how organized your records are um, and what kind of business you're in uh, will determine whether or not the quick method is in fact a good approach for you or not. Some businesses are not allowed by CRA to use the quick method. Accountants and bookkeepers, lawyers, those kind of things are not allowed to use the quick method. Um, there is a variety of other ones that aren't allowed to use it. However, in, in a lot of cases, the quick method may not necessarily play to your advantage. And again, before you make the decision on that, you want to talk to your accountant or tax advisor. Um, the simplified method is actually just a subset of the regular method. This is for people for whom your, uh, your books and records do not actually extract out the amount of your HST in your purchases, i.e., if I purchase something for $113, I can record it in one of two ways. I can record it that I spent $100 for my office supply, uh, plus I paid $13 in HST. Other people might record it that they spent $113 in office supplies. The simplified method would then allow you to extract out the amount of your HST. Okay? Um, you do need to determine in advance which method you're going to be using. If you make no elections in one way or another, you are automatically by default going to be using the regular method. Which is what most people in Canada tend to use. You have to use it throughout a filing period. You cannot change midstream. And you have to submit in order to change it, either in a written application or you need to contact the business line over the phone. Okay? Now, let's move on to the filing periods. There are some options that you've got. Um, the first monthly, quarterly, annually is the determination that needs to be made. For most small businesses, you're typically going to be looking at an annual filing period. There is a benefit to using that annual filing period, and what that is is your tax, re your HST return is due the end. Uh, sorry, is due June 15th. So you've got a long period to file it. For some people, that's a good thing. Or other people, not so much. Um, if you owe money, which most people will owe HST, you, although you can get refunds under certain circumstances, uh, if you owe money, that money is due by April 30th. Sort of strange. It begs the question, how the heck would I know how much I owed if I hadn't completed my return? And uh, that's perhaps a conversation for another day. But even if you don't have it completed, if you have a rough idea of how much you owe or your accountant can give you an estimate, then you can at least make a payment by April 30th if you're in a position to, to be able to avoid any penalties or interest. Okay. Now, penalties will not accrue unless you miss your filing date, which for the case of an annual person would be June 15th. If you're quarterly, then your filing date is, and your due date for the amount is one month, 30 days after the end of the quarter. Now, most people in Canada are typically quarterly or annual filers unless they're very large businesses. Uh, so if you want to avoid the interest and the penalties, then what you want to do is you want to ensure that you get things filed on time and meet all the deadlines. 
Also, a quick note, if you're an annual filer and your net tax for any fiscal year is $3,000 or more, then you may have to make quarterly installment payments for the following fiscal year. And again, there are penalties and interest that will apply if you don't. Right? So there's not only penalties and interest for missing filings, but there's also installment interest if you're required to do installments and you don't make those installments. Okay. Moving right along, what happens now that I've registered? So I went to business registration online. I got my nine-digit registration number that typically starts in eight. And then I said, okay, I also want to register for HST. So it gives me an extension to that number that is typically RT0001, unless you have more than one business. Okay. I've identified as I've gone through the process that I want to be an annual filer for the sake of argument. Okay, now what happens? Well, you have to report, you have to file, and you have to remit or collect your refund if that's the circumstance. Quite frankly, a lot of people tend to think, oh my gosh, more paperwork that I have to deal with for the government. And it's really, really simple. There's ultimately only three questions that are asked on the HST filing return. The first question is very simple. How much did you sell during the period? So let's assume that in a sample business I'm talking about, for the case of simple math, I'm going to say we sold $100,000. Uh, actually, let's make it simpler, $20,000. Uh, what The second question is, what HST did you collect on that volume? Well, we sold $20,000, we registered right off the bat, we collected 13% of $20,000, that means we collected $2,600, 13% of 20000 okay? The next question they ask is this, how much HST did you pay on the things that you purchased for your business? These are known as your input tax credits, ITCs, okay? So let's assume in my hypothetical example here that John Doe, who's running this business, purchased a number of different things in the running of his business, whether we're talking about pens and paper or a new computer or coffee for the office, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, anything that had HST inherent in it, you subtract it, you, you calculate out that the amount of that HST or record it separately, and then you will get that back. So now in our example, we've said, okay, uh, in this business, we collected $2,600. I'm going to hypothetically say that his input tax credits amounted to $1,000. And so the government says, well, you owe us $2,600. We owe you back the $1,000. So just send us in a net check for $1,600. So that net becomes the amount that you need to remit. And yes, it can very well happen, especially in the early days of a business, that your ITCs are in fact more than the amount that you've collected and you can be getting a refund. Especially if you've got a business maybe where you have a lot of expenses in the first year and little or no revenue until the second year. Okay? You can file this either online or on uh, in using a paper filing. Uh, you can pay for it. If you have a business account, you can pay for it online. You can also pay for it through the CRA website. Uh, you can go into the bank with your paperwork and the bank will take it directly. Or you can simply mail a check along with your filing, whatever works for you. Okay. Now we get to some of the what ifs, because there's some other issues that could apply here. What if I've got a really simple system? Right? Uh, again, like I said before, you could be talking about file folders, you could be talking about Excel, you could be talking about QuickBooks, Simply Accounting, or some of the other softwares out there if you hadn't set it up to extract out your, your HST. It doesn't really matter what system you're using, but if it doesn't separate out your HST, there's also a way that you can determine how much your HST is in anything. You can take, if you, it's very easy if I said to somebody, $113 is the amount that you paid. How much was it before tax? Everybody knows intuitively the pre-tax price is $100, right? How do you get there is the question. If I said to you your, your price including tax was 56.50, 50 
you'd have to think a little bit more about it. But to get there, if you do the math, you take the total price that you pay, including tax, divide it by 1.13 for most items. I, I do have to put that caveat in there. There's some things where this formula won't work exactly, or there may be other formulas that apply. 99% of what you're going to be talking about will have HST in it at 13%. Uh, to get the uh, actual amount uh, of HST, you then take that number times 13%, or the alternative would be to take the total minus the pre-tax is also going to give you your HST. Okay? Um, next question. What if you have interprovincial sales? Well, now you've got different rates. You've got different calculations to deal with. This can potentially get fairly complex, and so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this issue. Carla, sorry, I, I know you mentioned this one right off the bat. Um, however, it's, uh, it, it'll get fairly complex, and it'll vary literally province by province by province, and it depends on what kind of thing you're selling as well. Um, so in Ontario, we charge 13%, which is our harmonized sales tax, hence HST. Uh, some provinces are harmonized. Some operate on a provincial or retail sales tax with the GST, which is what Ontario had prior to July of 2010. Also, what if you have international sales? What if I sell to American clients? Well, you don't charge HST to American clients. Or put more appropriately, you actually charge them. However, you charge them at a rate of zero. Right? Very subtle difference and a, and a whole separate conversation that I won't get into in detail right now, but we have those, uh, those items that are subject to regular HST. We have those that are subject to HST at a rate of zero, and we also have those items that are exempt from HST. And uh, again, on the CRA website, they have a really great video that discusses some of the differences and what exactly is exempt. Uh, and there's a, a wide variety of things that are exempt. But for the most part, what most people are going to be dealing with in their small businesses will be subject to regular HST at the regular rates. But if you do have international clients, they end up paying only your $1,000 bill. They don't get charged HST in addition to that. What happens if you make a mistake in your filing? You have a number of different options, the easiest of which, and, and for the sake of argument, I want to talk predominantly about what if you missed uh, some of the HST that you paid on some of your business inputs. Uh, then in that case, you, it'll simply roll forward into the next period. You have up to four years to claim it, so there's no problem just simply including that in the next period's return. Now, you can go online through CRA's My Business account, and you can actually make a change in a prior filing. You can also do that manually. Um, however, for the most part, it's usually easiest, simplest, to simply include that amount in the next filing. However, if you've made a mistake in your uh, in your sales recording, you've under-recorded your sales, CRA wants to see that fixed directly and immediately. And so what's going to happen there is you are asked to refile that return or make an adjustment. Again, talk to your accountant or tax advisor beforehand. Similarly, should you decide you want to change filing methods or filing periods, there's, a, uh, there's forms that you can use for that. You can also do it online. You can call through to the business, uh, the business line we talked about before. And all of these things will provide you the options to do what you want to do. But again, talk to your accountant first. Okay? A uh, few resources that I'll make, uh, make you aware of. Um, the uh, Goods and Services Tax, Harmonized Sales Tax page at CRA. Uh, if you go into the main CRA page and simply go to the business section, you'll see there's a section for GST, HST, everything you wanted to know, and then more. Uh, you can also get to business registration online through there as well. Additionally, uh, like I said, just do a quick Google search. It'll take you there pretty quickly and easily. The General Information for HST Residence Guide, uh, Registrants Guide, is RC4062, and here's the link for that. 
Uh, additionally, my business account, nice and easy, here's the CRA website, just with a forward slash, my business account will take you right there. Okay? So, we've talked about when you should register for HST, and for the majority of my clients, the answer is as soon as possible. Right up front is usually a good time. How do we do it? We've talked about that. Some of the methods of filing. We've talked about the filing periods for most small businesses. It'll be annual. We've talked about the processes that you go through in filing, what it is that you're actually filing and how to do that. We've talked about a few miscellaneous issues as well. Okay? Now, just to wrap it up, I mentioned earlier about your ongoing record keeping and books, and there's a big difference between that and dealing with it all at the end of the year. I don't want you or this guy who's coming coming to the end of the year and now they're panicking trying to get everything done how, how do we pull this all together when and if you've got everything done on an ongoing basis it's going to be so much easier there's an expression in my business inch by inch it's a cinch but yard by yard it's hard so try and get your stuff together on an ongoing basis rather than trying to deal with it all at the end of the year regardless of what kind of system you're using don't forget, when you're up to your neck in alligators, it's difficult to remember that your original objective was to drain the swamp. So always keep it in mind, what was my original objective? What is it that I wanted to achieve, which is collecting back all the money that I'm due in my HST and making sure that I pay the government what they're due on a timely basis, an accurate basis. So now we'll open the floor to questions. I'll hand it back to you, Carla.